Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and today we're going to take a look at the much anticipated EVGA P67 based motherboard. This is the 4th of inversion and it supports up to 3-way SLI. It has USB 3 and of course since it is based on the P67 Intel chipset, it supports Core i7 and Core i5 processors. Onto the side of the cover box, you can see a list of some of the unique features on the P67 for the Win Edition motherboard. You have the onboard CPU temperature miter, you have the passive chipset heatsink design, and you also have 100% solid state capacitors. It has 12 phase PWM uh, for clean and variable power switching, and you also have triple BIOS support in case uh, before you upgrade to a newer BIOS, you can compare your old version or uh, in simply just for safety when overclocking. And the CPU pins also have more gold content, that means it has lower inductance and overall better power delivery. For multiple PCIe users, you can disable it through jumpers that are on board the motherboard. So uh, in case if, for example, you have a uh, faulty uh, faulty video card inside your uh, water cooling loop and uh, it will be take too much effort just to uh, troubleshoot each one and take apart your system and so you can just use the jumpers and uh, quickly assess what the problem is. Of course there's also a bonus uh, storage using a uh, flash storage drive. It is a compact flash right on board. It's a unique feature that I haven't seen on any uh, P67 boards as of yet. In the back, you have a quick overview of what the P67 for the Win Edition motherboard looks like. Just a quick glance, it has a lot of, uh, since it has support, it supports the 3 way SLI. It has uh, 5 PCIe and 16 slots, and there's also a black one for a uh, PCIe, uh, an extra PCIe, and it also a 1X PCIe uh, slot on the top. And uh, we're going to take a, take a closer look at that once we open the box. And for now, we're going to glance over some of the other features that we that were enlisted inside. Of course, uh, we haven't mentioned yet that the there are actually uh, two USB 3.0 ports in the rear, and I'm assuming one more and uh, on midboard for a. Uh, let's find it. Uh, there's actually uh, doesn't mention here, but there's a uh, two in the rear panel, then two SATA three, and four SATA two. So it doesn't have extra. SATA ports like other motherboards, but uh, it actually even it, although it has a, it appears to have an a FireWire port at the back, two uh, FireWire ports, one rear panel, one midboard, and the it has dual Ethernet ports. So it certainly has it, it 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 may lack in some of the features that you're used to, but it has some more of its unique uh, features that are not found in other motherboards. Uh, this form factor appears to be larger. It says it says EATX form factor, but the box is actually uh, a lot smaller than what I would expect from regular EATX motherboard. So we'll actually take a look at it once we have opened the box. Take a look at uh, just just how big the P67 for the win motherboard is. As for the warranty, the EVGA P67 for the win motherboard comes with a three-year warranty, and of course EVGA is award-winning 24/7 support. And see what is on the other side. Uh, just a bunch more promotional information for EVGA. So let's, uh, let's grab a knife and open up the box and see what you can find inside. With the cover box removed, we have a smaller black box and uh, just flip it open so we can see what the contents are. We have two main compartments and uh, here on the left side we have these accessories. Appears to be some sort of a front panel uh, connector. You can uh, you can adjust. You can overclock with it, and uh, of course, there's a post-go display and uh, PCIe disabling jumpers. Um, this uh, similar function to the one found on the motherboard uh, itself, and there's a clear CMOS button. There's definitely and one more. You see that each uh, each accessory is packaged inside an EVGA custom. Uh, anti-static packaging and here you have appears to be a 4-pin uh, Molex to SATA connector. Let's just uh, crack it open so you can see. You have 
these uh, SATA cables, two SATA cables and a 4-pin Molex to two SATA power adapters and uh, put on the side and here if you can see it but this this is the USB 2.0 and firewire port for the midboard connect to the uh, PCIe expansion slot and this appears to be a connector for the I'm assuming for the uh, front panel which you can attach and uh, the side and finally this is the USB 3.0 that you can attach in the uh, rear expansion slot. As for the other compartment, we have more accessories. Here is a, uh, you can see it, let me just uh, crack it open. And uh, it's another uh, unique EVGA accessory here. This is an EVGA gauge. You can uh, the meter it actually counts up to six gigahertz, so you actually just plug this in midboard, and uh, you can probably screw this into your PCIe slot, and you can see it from the side, and it measures your overclock, I'm guessing, or whatever your your uh, core clock is in real time. This is a appears to be a small active fan. Um, it's from glancing, it's it looks smaller than a 40 millimeter, so. It's probably around the 35 millimeter, 30 millimeter. Take out, uh, take a look at that later. Let's install it and I'll just open it again because it's hard to see. This is Oops, let me just grab that. This, uh, these are two SATA cables, locks, and uh, four pin Molex to. Three SATA power connectors. And uh, took from the cable. I think this is these are the SATA three ones. So the SATA six ones. Uh, let's move that side. And we have an SLI bridge for dual SLI. We have a triple SLI bridge. And we have another SLI bridge here. It's, a, it's actually it's comparable. This is actually for a. You can see that the gap is longer. This is just for equally spaced dual slot uh, graphics card. But this triple SLI one has a longer gap after the second card. The third. Let's put it inside, and we have the uh, IO shield plate. And you can see there's a space here for the small fan that we have we have uh, looked at uh, take a look at that later once we install it and finally the EVGA for the wind motherboard documentation so that you have a driver CD utility and as a quick fold up guide for installation comes in multiple languages see Japanese, uh, French, Spanish, and German, and Chinese, so it should be very convenient. Oh. And this one, if you, don't, if you don't feel like reading the entire manual, there's a, a quick and uh, thorough guide of uh, how to use, just a quick overview of how to use your motherboard. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, there's uh, more inside. You have uh, some of the features unique. Of course, here's a uh, quick guide on the ECP front panel that was included. It's actually not part of the, it's a separate sheet, so this is unique to this specific For the Win edition. It's a $279 For the Win edition motherboard. And uh, let's see if we missed anything. Surprisingly, there's no sticker or, or uh, case badge. And underneath, we have the motherboard itself. As you can see, the EVGA P67 for the win motherboard is slightly wider than a standard ATX form factor, which measures 12 by 9 inches. The EVGA P67 for the win measures 12 by 10 and a half inches. And this is still smaller than the extended ATX form factor of 12 by 12 inches.
the CPU area uses a Lotz black socket 1155. You can see that there is a 12 phase PWM cooled by these passive heat sinks and they actually open up. Uh, they're not sticking out straight up so they are actually slanted outwards to accommodate your larger uh, aftermarket heat sinks in terms of space. The heat pipes don't touch the uh, your aftermarket cooling heat pipes don't touch the passive heat sinks that are installed in the EVGA P67 for the wind motherboard. Also, unique feature on the EVGA P67 for the wind motherboard are the pair of uh, mounting holes. You not only have the standard LGA 1155 mounting holes, but you also have your LGA 775 mounting holes. Now, this is convenient if you are a user and has an old water block that fits a socket 775, you can reuse it on the EVGA P67 for the wind motherboard. On the upper left hand corner of the motherboard you will find a pair of EPS 12 volt 8 pin power connector. You only need to use this one right here for standard and even your air cooling options if you want to do a LN2 or an extreme overclocking for example. You can use the extra 8 pin EPS 12 volt power connector and you also have another 4 pin fan header right here on to the side. On the upper right hand corner of the motherboard you will find your CPU fan header or 4 pins, your voltage readout points right above the dim slots and these dim slots are alternating channels supports dual channel DDR3 up to 16 gigabytes and 2133 megahertz. You also have an additional 4 pin fan connector onto the far corner. On the right side of the EVGA P67 for the wind motherboard, you will find a 90 degree angled 24 pin power connector. This is convenient for cable management as there is less clutter on top of the area. Also, it will allow you to use this compact flash card slot for extra storage. It's easy to pull your card in and out of the area if the 24 pin power connector is out of the way. There's also a 4 pin fan connector right beside the jumper switches. Now these jumper switches are for disabling the PCIe slots so you can easily troubleshoot your video cards, whichever one is faulty, without breaking your water cooling loop. It's for the hard drive connectors, you have 6 in total. The red ones are the SATA 6G and the black ones, there are four of them in total, are the SATA 3Gs. Underneath this low profile black heat sink with a P67 for the win logo is the Intel chipset. Here in the lower right hand corner you will find your ECP V4 connector, your front panel LED and front panel switch connectors in they are color coded. So have your USB 3.0 header mid board. You can use with the um, PCI attachment in the rear that is included in the package. And you have one more four pin system fan right underneath the debug LED. Now this debug LED also doubles as a CPU temperature monitor. So you can conveniently look at the CPU temperature through this LED when it's turned on. Uh, separate from the desktop monitoring utility that you're using. You have two USB 2.0 headers right underneath, color coded in red, and you also have a firewire header right color coded in white beside them. At the very bottom of the board you can find a built-in speaker, your BIOS select toggle switch, you can select up to three settings, you have your reset and power switch. You also have another clear CMOS button right here. The reset switch actually doubles as an activity LED and you'll also have a 4 pin fan connector right beside your CMOS reset switch. The EVGA P67 for the wind motherboard has plenty of PCIe X16 connectors and you can even run triple SLI in 16 by 8 by 8 thanks to the NF200 chipset located underneath this heatsink. There are also a pair of PCIe X1 slots. One is a full size slot and one is a smaller slot right here. 
Unfortunately, because the heat sink is in the way, you cannot use this unless you are running an aftermarket cooling in this section and replace this heat sink or have a water block. Right above that is a 4-pin Molex power connector you can use for extreme overclocking to add additional power to your PCIe. There's also a 4-pin fan header there and the pins to connect the EV gauge provided in the P67 for the wind motherboard. Also a fan, uh, rather the front panel audio connector located on the far left corner. In the rear I.O. you can find a CMOS reset button. Firewire port, you have USB ports, there are two, four, six USB 2.0 ports in total, and a pair of eSATA ports right underneath. You also have a pair of RJ45 Ethernet ports, and a pair of USB 3.0 ports, and you have six audio ports at the back.